Hello there, welcome back to my channel. This is my next episode of Eye It or Buy It. I think it's episode number three so far in my series where I talk about new and recent makeup releases with a heavy bent towards eyeshadow palettes. Basically, I'm just looking at what is being released and tell you my opinions and in the comments, you tell me yours. So I think it's fun to chat about things and look at new releases. If you're new to my channel, my name is Rachel and I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom who loves to play with colorful eyeshadow. So if you wanna see lots of colorful content on your timeline, then you may wanna consider liking and subscribing because I upload about three videos a week. So this eyeshadow look was filmed, at least most of it was filmed, and I'll tell you the story because it's a little bit of a story. I started filming this this morning. My whole day has been a bit of a hot mess. I was spilling things, dropping things, knocking things over. I used four different palettes to create today's look and I opened up one of them and one of the Super Shock shades just shattered all over me so my pants were speckled with shimmery eyeshadow. It was that kind of a day. I also ended up not feeling well for most of the day. I'm finally feeling pretty well right now, but I'm gonna be doing this video and then going to bed. Um, but this eyeshadow look was actually inspired by Blake Lively's dress at the 2022 Met Gala event. Did you see her dress? It was beautiful. It was so interesting. It was when she arrived at the event, it was this bronzy um, taffeta tulle sort of puff. And it was eclectic and interesting. It was asymmetrical. It was very pretty a beautiful ball gown and it had a lot of embellishments um very metallic it was really interesting she had pictures taken and whatnot and then she got to the top of the stairs at the event and peop some people came running up to her and did some unpinning and untucking and took away a section of her dress and all of a sudden it was revealed to be this gorgeous rose gold and like a Tiffany blue ball gown that just like draped out in this gorgeous train. It was such a beautiful, I mean, both versions of the dress were beautiful and it was such a neat transformation. So anyway, all of that to say, that final result was my inspiration for today's eyeshadow look. I was trying to do the Tiffany blue into a rose gold with some bronzy brown elements. Initially, I didn't love how it turned out, but actually as I've worn it throughout today, I think it's kind of pretty. I tried to film it for you. I used four different palettes. And the video just didn't work because halfway through the video, my phone just decided to stop. I think maybe I had lack of storage. Anyway, it was a hot mess. If I had finished that video, I would have uploaded it. It would have been like, you know, this video is a mess. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about new releases within the world of eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to scooch to the side a little bit here so that I can put up, I can put up a picture of what I'm talking about. And I am first gonna talk about something which is actually limited edition and not even currently available. I think they're gonna be restocking and we're just gonna jump right in with ColourPop. That is the ColourPop Winnie the Pooh collaboration. Oh my word, this collection is adorable. First off, the packaging. I love that it's Winnie the Pooh, but it's more the older version of it. It's not like um, really bright primary color cartoon version. It's more the vintage book version and I love that in the illustrations and the coloring. The collection itself includes, <clears throat> I believe, some Super Shock cheeks, some lip products. Um, it's got these adorable little honey pots, which sold out like instantly, which are um, like a lip care set. And they even have the little honeycomb dipper. It's just adorable. Um, but of course, I want to talk about the eyeshadow palette. So the eyeshadow palette is called, I believe it's called As Sweet As Can Be. And I think that this is quite a cute palette. Um, it's not currently available. I believe it's sold out. But it's actually, it's kind of a neutral palette with a bit of a twist towards color, but not in a scary way. Um, it's got much more subdued, uh, less vibrant pigmentation where you've got a softer yellow, a softer pink, softer peach, even the deepening shades, like there's a lovely berry tone in here and then more of a terracotta reddish shade. And those are subdued as well. Nothing is big and bright and bold and in your face. It's all muted and low key. So it's a good fit for neutral lovers who want to have a little pop of color, something like a sage green or a soft yellow, but it's also good for a color lover such as myself who might want to have a bit of neutral bent towards their look. So I think it's a really cute palette. I love the design of the packaging. I love how the pans are in these little honeycomb shapes and I think it's a really good array of color options, shimmer options, formula options, deepening shades and depths and whatnot. And it's actually it's actually quite cute. I don't know if I personally will pick it up because I don't think that these colors would actually be that unique within my collection. I think I could probably dupe this out pretty easily with what I've got, except maybe for the two green shades. There, it looks like there are two greens, like a lighter, mintier green and then a slightly deeper toned sage green. It, I think they're both shimmers. I can't quite tell from the picture, but there are two greens in this palette and I'm not sure that those are represented 
possibly anywhere within my collection. So I think those might be unique. And maybe the yellow to the left of the greens where it's more of a, of a buttery, honey sort of yellow, that might be unique to my collection as well. But overall, I mean, I think it's a really cute palette. I've seen a lot of reviews about it and how it's good ColourPop quality, and I think it's really nice. ColourPop has also just released a new collection called Apricot Caught Me Not. This one is another neutral sort of palette collection. I really love the packaging. I think ColourPop does a beautiful job with their cardboard packaging. I dislike the plastic packaging. I think it's it's clumsy, tacky, doesn't doesn't close super well. I have several pal um, plastic palettes that don't close all the way. Um, just not as sturdy as I would like it to be because there's actually sometimes a gap between um, the top of the packaging and where the shadows are set down inside of it. So I don't love their plastic packaging, but I think they do a beautiful job with their cardboard packaging. It's nothing crazy like uh, like Uden's Eye, for example, but it is really neat, tasteful, usually quite pretty. And I think that this this is no exception. The Apricot Me Not is obviously apricot themed, um, and it's got like a soft pink sort of packaging. This collection comes with a couple of different more orangey yellow toned blushes, I think, and some highlighters, some lip stuff. And as usual, I'm most interested in the palette. So the palette itself, you know, it is hard to tell with a lot of ColourPop's promo pictures because I feel like sometimes they change the saturation level on the picture. So what I see on ColourPop's Instagram page, for example, is a totally different color story than what I see on um, perhaps the Instagram page or um, a YouTube review of somebody who's gotten the product and is now talking about it. I just, I see a lot of variety in those p pictures and it's really confusing. I think sometimes it's hard for me to know what the product actually looks like based off of what ColourPop launches. But I'm on their website right now and the Apricot Me Not collection looks to be certainly a neutral palette with a hint towards the yellowy peachy tones. It's not full on peach because it's got a bit of the yellow orange tone to it so it is more um, apricot toned. I think the palette's pretty. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a lot of depth except for one deepening shade but Every other shadow in this palette looks kind of mid-toned. There's nothing super, super light, probably because it would blend into nothing on lots of skin tones. Um, so I don't know, it's not super exciting to me. I don't think it's terribly interesting. I don't think it's unique to their collection at all. I think you could find these shadows in multiple other ColourPop palettes. If you have a reasonable size ColourPop collection, you probably have most of these shades or something comparable. It looks pretty. If these are your tones and they look nice on your skin and you like them, then it's probably a good buy. It's probably good ColourPop quality. It's it's just not very interesting to me because it doesn't really have much to offer. I do like the center shimmer, like a peachy pink shimmer, but I have that elsewhere. And now, of course, I think everyone knows ColourPop has launched a Star Wars collaboration, a whole Star Wars palette and collection. I see lipsticks, I see uh, luxe lip products, I see Jelly Much shadows. It's a big thing. And actually, this is another perfect example of not really understanding the color scheme of the palette based on ColourPop photos. Because the first several photos that I saw of this eyeshadow palette, um, they were really muted and kind of, kind of washed out. And I saw it and I was like, oh, well, that's not very exciting. And it really made me think that it was a bit of a repeat of each of the three individual palettes that they've come out with, The Child, The Mandalorian, and um, whatever their most recent one was, the Darth Vader one, I don't remember. Um, but I thought that this palette looked like kind of a conglomeration of all three of those, minus the greens from The Child, and I was like, but why? Like, you, you already released all of these. However, since I have seen some reviews of the palette, and I have seen some other better, more saturated photographs of the palette itself, I think it's actually quite a pretty palette. I like the pop of blue, the pop of red. It has a very nice range of light, medium, dark tones. It has a good array of formulas from shimmer to matte to, I think they're called the sequin formula, which is a matte with a little bit of sparkle. I think it's really nice. And I have seen some, um, some interesting and good reviews and looks with this palette. So I think if I were to grab this palette, the red shimmers in it might be enough to convinced me to pass on my BH Cosmetics Garnet palette because I keep that one for the reds, but if I could get really good quality reds in a ColourPop palette along with others, I would probably pass on the Garnet palette. So this is one that I'm kind of keeping my eye out for. I like the variety. You've got more warm tones, you've got cool tones, you've got gold and silver and, you know, cool tone blue with warm tone reds, you've got browns, and then it has two very interesting shades, the top right corner and the bottom left corner. Um, 
I've noticed ColourPop has started coming out with more interesting looking shades. These two look kind of like galaxies where there are a couple of shadows mixed up into one. The first time I personally saw that was in Uden's Eye palettes where you might get um, like a blue and a white shimmer all in one pan in this pretty stripy pattern or something and you end up getting it blended together on your brush and you have its own color. So that seems to be what ColourPop is starting to do. I think they're really pretty and they really really work with the theme in the packaging like these interstellar star sort of um, feel to the shadows themselves. I think the packaging is really good. Again, just like Winnie the Pooh, I like that they went more vintage with the packaging because I think that makes people feel nostalgic and it's probably more of a selling point. It's actually really well done. I personally don't have any interest in uh, the Jelly Mutt shadows, even if they're great. I don't like to have lots of little pieces in my, my collection. I really would prefer to have just palettes. I mean, I like the Super Shocks, although every time I have a Super Shock in a palette, today being a prime example, it shatters on me and that's super annoying. And I, I wonder if they shatter within the little containers or not. Um, I like the formula, but I don't want little pieces hanging around because they will get lost. Uh, they'll get eaten by my baby, they'll fall behind palettes and I'll never remember that they exist. And I feel the same way about the Jelly Munch. But anyway, if I can find this palette, um, I might be interested in getting it. So Unearthly Cosmetics is releasing a new palette called Leather and Lace. And you know, I really have mixed feelings about this one. Let me talk about the color scheme. I'm sorry, I have a hair somewhere. The color scheme itself, if I just look at the shadows, I think it's interesting. You could really do looks using just the rows themselves. So straight across the top, you've got green and yellow and like a deep blue sort of shade. Uh, the middle row is more peaches and oranges and bricky colors. And then the bottom row is obviously pink, purple, berry sort of shades. You've got some shimmers that work with each one. Oh my word. You've got some shimmers that work with each one. And I think the colors are actually quite beautiful. They sort of remind me, if I just look at the colors, they remind me of the Flare palette from Ace Beauté, which is one of my favorites. I actually really love that color story. So color story wise, when it comes to the actual shadows, I like these colors. I think they're interesting. Um, I think they could use maybe one or two lighter shades and one or two darker shades. However, it's, you know, it's not a huge palette. You only have so many shadows. So I think overall it's quite a, quite a pretty color story. But I don't like the packaging itself. I think that first off, the color story overall is more warm, but the packaging, at least from what I see in this picture, is like lace covered fabric and it's very cool toned. And I feel that they clash. The fabric-y is like a white and black lace, but then the color story is um, autumnal pumpkin, grungy green sorts of colors. And I feel that they're, they're butting heads, like the packaging and the shadow colors don't mesh. And that is seriously throwing me off. It's really getting me where I see it and my eyes just kind of are fighting with the image. Do you know what I mean? I like the shadows. I really don't like the way that they're presented. I think it's it's disorienting to have, I don't know, there's something about it that throws me off. I also personally, like if you saw what I said about the uh, Kaleidos launch with the little quad palettes where they had, again, I think it was lace over top of a fabric, probably a little puffy kind of pa packaging. I just don't really prefer that kind of aesthetic. I, th I think that this leather and lace collection might not actually have the lace over top, like physical lace, the way that Kaleidos did. This looks like it may be printed on there. I'm not sure. I just, I don't really like something about it. I like the colors, but not the packaging. I think that's what it is. This palette doesn't interest me, not only for that reason, but also because I have the Flare palette from Ace Beauté, which I really like. And this to me seems like basically their version of that one. Adept Cosmetics is releasing a very short time limited edition palette called the House of L. Apparently it's based off of the, um, the brand owner's deep and abiding love for Superman. And I think that this is an unpopular opinion, but I don't really care for this palette. All of the pictures that I've seen have shown some really beautiful shadows, but I think when you take the, the tones and put them together, they're not terribly cohesive. I see a lot of very orangey reds and then paired with some of these more jewel tone shimmers, it doesn't quite work for me. And then this greenish blue, like this teal aqua shade is very, very pretty. But again, paired with orangey reds, I think it's hard for those colors to work together. And then this is personal opinion. Well, that was too, honestly, but personal opinion about the packaging. I can't stand this hyper metallic, holographic sort of packaging that brands do. BH Cosmetics did it in their brunch series and I've seen it in other palettes as well. Just a very metallic, holographic, reflective inner packaging, which to me actually detracts 
from the eyeshadow colors and particularly in this palette, the, the House of L palette, which is filled with lots of different um, shimmer formulas. I think uh, several of these are multi or at least duochromes. They're beautiful shadows in and of themselves, but they have to compete with the cardboard packaging around them and it draws the eye away from the shadows. So you're not even appreciating the shadows for what they are and what they can offer. You just see shimmer and shine and color and light reflect everywhere. And I think it's visually very confusing just to have that reflective packaging. Maybe I would like the palette more or at least be more drawn to it if it didn't have that packaging. But I think at the end of the day, the colors themselves, I mean, the picture that I'm looking at right now, I see a vibrant, like a fuchsia pink shimmer, a deep plummy purple shimmer, a beautiful red shimmer. I see a blue tone shimmer, a green sage green shimmer, and I also see like a lavender pink shimmer. And then I see three mattes on the bottom, one of which looks peachy red. One of them is like a deep aqua, and then the other one is more of a an orange red shade. And I just, I just, I don't know how the looks would turn out. First off, you don't have many mattes to work with, only three. They're all mid-tone, verging towards dark tone. The real variety within this palette is the shimmers, but which shimmers work well with which mattes? I don't know. I think it's pretty, they might be beautiful shadows, but the, the way that it's all paired together and how it's been curated doesn't really appeal to me. I mean, I know that a lot of people love it and are super excited about it. So like I said, I think that's an unpopular opinion, but I'm over it, that's my opinion. <laughs> I think I saw Heather Austin mention these next palettes. They are the I Heart Revolution Disney Fairy Tale books. Apparently this brand has come out with several palettes inspired by Disney princesses. I see Ariel, Mulan, Jasmine, um, and not just eyeshadow palettes, but also it looks like cheek and lip products as well. And the newest releases within this collection are Moana and Tangled, so that would be Rapunzel. Let me pull up those palettes themselves. So the one or two times that I've tried anything from Makeup Revolution, I haven't been very impressed by the formula. When I look at these palettes, I think they actually did a really good job with the color story. It looks like they kind of nailed the color story. The palettes are 18 pans. I don't know how big they are or how big the pans are, but like the Moana, for example, really seems representative of the character and the colors within the show. I think they did a good job. There's a variety of greens, orangey reds, several blues, and it's sort of, you know, tropical ocean sort of theme. Um, there are like yellows and burgundies and a couple of pinks. I see a variety of shade depths from light to dark. I don't know very much about their formula, shimmer versus matte, but overall I think it's a pretty color story. Uh, the other one is the Tangled version, which is predictably pretty heavy on the pinks, purples, and greens, but then there are also several deepening shades, and they threw in like a, a periwinkle color. They've got a yellow or two in here. Uh, there's a blue. I think they did a good job curating the color stories to the princesses and the movies, and this is probably quite a collectible item. It's really affordable, and people love Disney, and people love princesses, and I mean, shoot, if this is your thing and the color story and the formula work for you, it's probably a good buy. I'm not going to get them myself, but I think they're pretty. Okay, so now I want to talk about the Be Perfect X Makeup by Alina Rain Palette. There's a collection for this, including some other smaller products, but the palette is really the star of the show. The palette is beautiful. If you wanted a rainbow palette, if you wanted to, you know, buy one palette that would give you tons of color variety. And I have heard nothing but good things about the quality of Be Perfect Cosmetics eyeshadow formula. This palette's really beautiful. It's it's deep, it's jewel toned, there's a ton of variety. Oftentimes these palettes have a lot of blue and purple, but this one actually has a good balance as well of oranges, reds, browns, yellows, greens. It's actually really beautiful. And I think it's curated in a way that makes sense. The bottom row is more blues and greens, and then you've got purples and pinks in the middle, and then the top is the more um, orangey, reddish tones and browns. I think this palette has a couple, four. I think it has four pressed glitters, which mm, I don't like pressed glitters. I understand, particularly in a palette that is themed around royalty or royal colors, the feeling of luxury and royalty and nobility. I understand that glitters could really add that extra level of sparkle. I personally don't use glitters on my eyes. I don't really like the way they feel. I don't like the nuisance of having to take them off. I don't like the danger that they pose to my eye itself. I'm not interested in a palette with glitter, but I could theoretically make an exception for this if I didn't already have probably 90% of these shadows represented throughout my collection. It is a beautiful palette. It's not cheap. It's like 50 bucks. 
$47, I think, plus shipping and taxes and whatnot. But it is really beautiful. I actually didn't know who Makeup by Alina was. I went and checked out her Instagram page, and she is beautiful, and her eyeshadow looks are very, very, very pretty. She's creative. She's precise. She's got fabulous skills. I would certainly check out her social media, if nothing else, but this palette's quite, quite beautiful. Um, I like it. <laughs> And finally, my voice is starting to give out on me, so I'm going to close this video. I want to talk about two new palettes from Gloss Gods. I've never tried anything from Gloss Gods, but they have a lot of multi-chromes and some really, really pretty shadows. It looks like this new collection is two palettes, and I think they're called the Sky Collection or Sky Launch. I'm not sure. One of the palettes is called Look for Rainbows, and the second eyeshadow palette is called Dancing in the Sky. And both of these look really beautiful. Uh, Look for Rainbows is obviously a little bit more colorful. There are blues, pinks, purples, corals, yellows, greens. There are several multi-chromes in here. Um, one of my favorite things to look at with multi-chromes is, is to see the reflection in the mirror when you've got palette and then mirror reflecting. And you can often see the different shades of multi-chrome reflected in the mirror because it might look like, I don't know, a white shimmer in the palette itself, but then the mirror will tell you that there's actually blue and green reflect in there. So that's always fun. And you can see that a little bit in these pictures as well. Um, for example, um, the palette itself, it looks like there's a peachy shimmer, but within the mirror, I see more of an orange tone. Um, and it's just, these are full shimmer palettes and they are really, really beautiful. Again, they're not super affordable because they're multi-chromes and that's very expensive to formulate, but they're gorgeous. The second palette, uh, Dancing in the Sky, is definitely more greens. There are a lot of greens and yellows. And then I see a couple multi-chromes in here. There's one that looks like a green blue aqua. There's another one that looks more like um, like purple into blue with some pink and just very beautiful colors. Very beautiful. A lot of variety in depth of shades from lights to darks. Um, but again, they're all shimmer palettes. So they're more expensive because they're all shimmer and because they're multi-chromes, they're complicated shades to actually manufacture. And obviously, unless you are a full-on shimmer lover, they're probably not do-it-all palettes where you can do an entire eyeshadow look with just one because there are no mattes. I, I personally like more mattes than shimmers within my palettes. And I used to be of the opinion that I would never buy an only shimmer palette because I would forget about it and I like to be able to just grab a palette and do a look. However, I've been doing this for a, a little over a year now. Today I used four eyeshadow palettes for my look. So I'm definitely more comfortable grabbing from my collection. And the more I know my palettes, the more I can go, where would be the shade that I need? For example, I wanted like a rose gold for today's look because it was inspired by the dress. So I thought, well, I know that the Love Notes palette from Beauty Bay has rosy pinks and pinky golds, and I'm sure I can find something in there. I used two of the shimmers um, within that palette to get a rose gold look. But the point is I knew where to go. And so at this point, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like flat out say no to an all shimmer palette because I'm getting more comfortable to know that I can find exactly what I want in this place. And oftentimes I'll find myself going into the Hummingbird palette from Uden's Eye because that one is a little more shimmer heavy and the shimmers are beautiful. So I may not use any of the mattes, but I could grab a really impactful shimmer from that palette and pair it with something else. So where before I probably would have just said, no, I don't want an all shimmer because I would feel that the palette didn't offer enough to create a full look and I might feel overwhelmed by all these beautiful shimmers. Whereas, you know, if you have a palette that's more matte heavy with a couple shimmers, you only have a few choices, but I'm not there anymore. At this point, I think I'm comfortable with an all shimmer palette and these would be really good contenders. I would probably, if I had to choose between the two, go more for the Look for Rainbows palette because it has a little bit more color variety between blues, pinks, purples, yellows, greens. Um, whereas the other one, although it is gorgeous, is much heavier on the greens. Anyway, that is my Eye It or Buy It episode number three, I think. I really have a lot of fun making these episodes because I enjoy talking about eyeshadow palettes. I enjoy looking at them and trying to imagine different looks and the possibilities that they hold. And there's no one in my life who cares, so it's fun to make the video because, you know, if 30 people watch the video, then I can share my opinion with 30 people. And I love it if you comment below because then you can share your opinion with me and we can talk back and forth. And that's a lot of fun. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm tired, I've had a long day, I'm gonna go to bed, but I appreciate you being with me and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!